Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and wow, that's loud. And I'm here checking out Futuridium EP Deluxe. I really should have looked up how this game started out, I'm pretty sure it was a PC indie game of some kind. But now, it's here on PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4, so we will check it out. So, here we are in the main menu, that's pretty damn obvious if you ask me. And we've got several options. We've got Deluxe and Classic and a Locked Mode. I'm pretty sure I know what this is because I looked at the trophy list. Something to do with Flappy Bird. So, you know, absolutely not worth unlocking under any... <laughs> any sensible... schedule. Uh, we've got some simple options here. Now, I have to point out, every single menu in this game is bloody terrible. <laughs> I don't know how they, this got through, but this is a really hard menu to use. You can't tap rapidly, you can't move rapidly, just, and you can only use the analog stick instead of just the D-pad, because the D-pad is set to changing the music. I like being able to change the music, but it's like, couldn't you do that like on the touch screen or even the select button or something like that? It's just really difficult getting through this menu using the analog stick, because it's just, you press down and sometimes it goes down, but then sometimes it won't, and it's so annoying. I have no idea why they decided to do it like this. Let's just go have a look at the extras real quick. Got how to play, the introduction, and we have stats. I've played for about an hour at this point. I've crashed exactly a hundred times. Yeah. Think about that, that's over a crash a minute. So... Yeah, menu problems there. I'm going to play a little bit of the deluxe mode, and we'll see how far we can get. It's an all-new campaign. You've also got classic mode, which unlocks, and you've also and that has a bunch of older levels. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that yeah the old classic campaign because of that, this game had a previous release. Whatever, we're gonna go play deluxe because deluxe is more relevant. So this game is very simple. You're flying this ship. You have that energy bar on the top right. You have to go around and shoot as many of these cubes as you possibly can. You can press square to turn around. I really wish that was mapped to the L button. Then once you've destroyed every blue cube on the level, that black cube or white cube, whatever you want to call it, appears. You shoot that and you get to move on to the next level. Every cube you destroy gets you towards the next unlock, like 2,000 un um, 2, cubes unlocked classic mode, and 2,169 here, and at 2,500 I get an extra credit, which is basically an extra life. And we get three medals per stage, one for not dying, one for getting most or every block in the stage in a single chain, and the one in the middle, which I didn't get, is the time bonus, so you got to do it as fast as humanly possible. Now, this game definitely looks and sounds great. I mean, just look at it. It's a very... very active graphical powerhouse that shows off how the Vita actually works. It's really smooth, and the effects look pretty damn nice. It's just... There are so many bloody effects on screen at any one time that it can be really hard to, to, to determine exactly what's in front of you. And sometimes even exactly what might be above you. Special awareness in this game is a little bit of a problem. It might be hard to just determine if you're going to run into a wall or something. Like sometimes you'll even be flying below something and you'll be like, uh, is it safe to go up here? Have I come out from under it yet? And it turns out it isn't because the effect gone and had gone and confused you. There are also other problems as well. My main problem with Futuridium is that... It doesn't really feel like it's been designed for the PlayStation Vita. And I've got a couple of things backing me up on this. First thing is that they mapped changing the viewpoint to down on the D-pad. Now, I can understand why that would work on the PlayStation 4, but on the PlayStation Vita, twice already I've had my finger slip off and change the viewpoint. And this is what it changes the viewpoint to if you press it once at the default viewpoint. Imagine how bloody confused I was when the game suddenly went all first person on me. And I really don't want to play first person mode because how motion sick would that make you? Good lord. Like just, even just watching this be played, I imagine that would be terrible to just watch play. But actually playing this game and having to turn around so many times would 
God, that would just make you feel bloody terrible. I don't get motion sick that easy, but that would make me motion sick really, really quickly. And it's kind of nice how you can change the music anytime you like. I just wish there was a more convenient way of doing it. Like, why not map it to the top right corner of the screen? That would be a lot more convenient than having it on the D-pad. You can't use the D-pad in-game either. And in this game where precision is king, this isn't more of a... This isn't a shooter as much as it is a puzzler. It's definitely more of a puzzler than it is a typical shooter. Because you need to get everything in the right order. And these bonus levels definitely show that off. Because you have to fly through all these rings in a very specific order. Using the ability to turn around and fly all over the place. The game is a definite uh, precision game along the lines of, uh, let's say, Super Meat Boy. Where you have to do everything in a specific order in order to get the best score and the highest multiplier. And, you know, not run into shit and get killed. Because if you run, run into shit, well, there's absolutely no way you're going to get the finish the level in an extremely short amount of time that will probably make you rage bonus. Don't know how I managed to do that while I was actually talking a sentence, but whatever. <laughs> I'll take it. And that still wasn't enough. To, the, the short times in this game are really, really hard to get. It's unbelievable how short these can be. I tried playing the first level for 20 minutes. You saw the first level back there. It is like a 15 second level and I tr I played that crap for 20 minutes thinking uh, maybe I'll be able to actually get perfect on this just so I can show off that I've actually gotten three medals on something. No, the first level is actually really hard. The time limit on that mission is insanely difficult. It's unbelievable. Where the hell is the cube? And I ran into it. Wonderful. But my... My biggest major gripe with this game in relation to uh, the fact that I don't think it was designed for Vita in mind, with Vita in mind I should say, is the shooting here. As I said, the, many of these stages can definitely be more of a precision challenge than anything else. Because you need to be very quick in order to get all the cubes exactly how you want to get them, in order to get something like a... Oh god, missiles. I'm being attacked by missiles. Oh, damn it! You need to be very precise. And on the Vita, this is extremely difficult. Like, you'd be really surprised how hard it is to line up your shots, probably. Like, did you see how... Ow. Did you see how much trouble I have just lining up shots a long distance? You don't know exactly where your shot's gonna end up until you fire downrange. And while the game... It's like, it, there's no randomness to your shots, but the area of reference you've got is so bloody small that it's really hard to tell where your shots are going to land. And that is a massive problem for a game that relies on its accuracy. I mean, when stuff's up close, it's no problem, and maybe you'll have an easier time if you're in first-person view, but... It just seems like it's really hard to do because the Vita screen is so small, it doesn't really give you much room to actually see what you're doing sometimes. God damn it! And this leads to some very, very frustrating situations where it looks like you were supposed to hit the bloody cube, but you didn't. And that just makes it more frustrating every time you have to replay because one time it might be, oh god damn it, I could barely see what I ran into. Then another time might be, oh, I couldn't bloody aim properly because the view angle on the screen is so small. And this just compiles and compiles and compiles into just a massive ball of frustration. And the analog stick on this isn't particularly precise either. I played this on the PS4 just so I could confirm this feeling and it is true. The Vita analog stick doesn't feel very precise for what you need to do in this game. Where the bloody hell is this last cube? Jesus Christ. Like, you need to move a lot in this game. And it is very easy to go from going left and right to going slightly down left and slightly down right. And actually running, in, running into something in this game without realising it. So, you've got a lack of precision with the analog stick. I did that on purpose. Well, mostly on purpose. You've got a lack of precision of the analog stick, a screen that's really small and hard to see where you're going. 
and extremely strict time limits and chain limits to make a game that's really, really frustrating to play on this platform. And they could have fixed it with just a couple of tiny changes to the way the game worked. It just, it, it feels like they really didn't take the Vita into, uh, into account when they were making this version of the game. I think they just had the idea of, oh, we'll port this over just straight away and it'll work just fine. But no, it feels like they didn't do that. Like, imagine if there was just a tiny laser sight on the Vita screen. That would, or, or just even on the PS4 version, because I played the PS4 version. While I say it's definitely better there, it's definitely still not perfect. I'm gonna be stuck in here now, this will be fun. See what I mean by motion sickness? Yeah, definitely. If they just added a tiny little laser sight and maybe added the option to change how sensitive the ship is to movement. It might have turned out a whole lot better. God damn it. But... They didn't do it, and it just... The game right now feels like a... It just... It would be a hundred times more fun to play this game on PS4 than it would be on Vita. And that disappoints me. I'm gonna get out of here before I get squashed. Because when you die, you lose a lot of energy. And I do not want to lose any more energy. The game itself is great. I mean, it's a... Oh, god damn it! It is a... Fun little corridor shooter. Ah, oh, oh, This is so frustrating. Oh, see what I mean about spatial awareness? It's just... This game really does seem to lack a type of spatial awareness. It seems really necessary to get it to work properly. Bloody hell, how am I supposed to get into this goddamn thing? And I come in here, make my, make my way down to the bottom, and I swap, and I shoot, and I leave. So that was zone one. So, yeah, this game does have a few problems. It's just a small patch could fix most of this. And you know what the worst thing about this is? This game doesn't have cross save, so you can't go and do anything like on... Now, look, I'm just going to quit because I want to refresh my cr my credits. But I'm just going to go back to the main menu here and, yeah, massive menu troubles. But they could have made this game a whole lot more Vita friendly with just a tiny set of changes. Like, make it, make it so that it's a little bit harder to accidentally go down left and down right or up left and up right. Make it so that you could use the D-pad because the D-pad is a whole lot more precise. Allow a sort of laser sight that lets you see exactly where you're going to be shooting. Give it a... Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got, really. But the game itself is really pretty, runs really smoothly. Soundtrack is alright. Not amazing, but I mean it works with how the game works. Some of the tracks are it's hit and miss. It's a hit and miss thing. You can invert the the y-axis, but Jesus, that would just confuse me even more. Classic mode is it's just got, it's just a bunch of different things, like, it's just the same, it's just a different set of levels, and your energy doesn't recharge in between them, which really sucks sometimes, but, yeah. So, yeah, that was a look at future Radium EP Deluxe. I'm gonna go play Zone 2, and I'm gonna turn the volume up and stop the commentary. I wouldn't recommend this version, maybe the PS4 version, if you are, if you do enjoy this sort of gameplay, but... I mean, the PS Vita version needs a patch to maybe smooth out some of the stuff. If you think you can deal with all the things that I've just listed here, like the motion sickness, the tiny screen, the analog stick being a little oversensitive, and the menus being absolute ass to navigate through, you'll probably have a good time. Just go in knowing that that's a problem and there's a... You never know if they'll end up patching this or not. Maybe they will. Maybe I'll get a message from them when the video goes up, but... Until, until then, maybe, I, I can't really give you a yes or no on this one. It is about 10 bucks, 12 euros, something like that. I know it's 10 bucks, so I checked the price earlier, but I haven't checked the price for the other regions. 
So we're gonna go play Zone 2. I'm gonna play it until I die. I haven't made it through Zone 2 yet. Because I'm... I'm retarded. But... Yeah, I'll just, I'll just play through Zone 2. Commentary stops now. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.